What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Joe's Tech. Today we're going to be looking at the EVGA GTX 1070 Superclocked Edition again. We're going to be doing a little benchmarking with the Time Spy 3D Mark uh, benchmark for DirectX 12. And we're going to probably do a little overclocking and see, uh, see what we can get into. So let's get to it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the 3D Mark benchmark utility at 0 MHz, all default settings. Uh, we'll see what we end up with as far as the score goes. Let's launch that now. And we'll just skip to the end of this benchmark. And I'll show you guys the full benchmark once we've uh, made our overclock changes. So guys, I did just attempt to run the, uh, the first overclock. Uh, adjustment at 100 megahertz, 600 megahertz on uh, memory, but as I assumed it was going to it, it actually failed. So we're going to dial the GPU back a little bit to 90 megahertz. And we ran into the same issue when we did the Heaven Benchmark video. So let's see if 90 megahertz on the GPU clock fixes our issue.
A couple things I wanted to point out real quick. This is the final score after the GPU overclock 5036. Uh, the initial test with all default settings was 5064, so you can see that the rate, I'm sorry, the score actually dropped. Uh, the reason behind that is the initial test CPU scored 3288, so it dropped about uh, 250 points. And the reason behind that is probably the frame rate here, which has nothing to do with the fact that we uh, overclocked the graphics card. The graphics score went up exactly 100 points, and that was due to half a frame increase uh, after overclocking 100 megahertz. Obviously not a huge difference between the overclock and non-overclock benchmark, but hopefully this will give you guys a general idea. That... All right guys, that's all the benchmarks we're gonna be running today. If you guys saw my previous video where we ran the Heavens benchmark, uh, we didn't really get that high of an overclock in that case either. Um, I was a little disappointed because I'm seeing other people online who are claiming they're getting 220, 230 megahertz uh, overclock to the GPU on this same card. Um, but obviously that wasn't the case for us. Reality is, the card still works great. Uh, I'm only doing 1080 gaming. I'm gonna be able to max out anything that I possibly could. I think the card would still work great for 144 hertz gaming. I think it would also work great for 1440p. Uh, people out there, if someone were to ask me, is it worth it to upgrade when I'm still running an older i7-970 like I'm running? Uh, I think it definitely is. In my case, I was running dual GTX 470s before in SLI, and those things were consuming a boatload of power and this more than doubled the performance and cut the power down to like a third of what I was using before. So, totally worth it. Alright guys, if you have any questions or any feedback, I'm always happy to hear it. Please leave a comment below. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on the way out. And if you guys would like to see more content like this, I'm currently doing a project where I'll be migrating my old equipment over to this new Fantex into a Vault tempered glass case. I did some cable saving. I got some more products coming in, some more tutorials, some more unboxing stuff. Uh, I think it's going to be a good time. If you guys like to promote the growth of my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button and follow along. It's going to be a good time. Until next time, this has been Joe's Tech. Have a good night.